Greetings, Earthlings. This is a show about unidentified flying objects, flying saucers if you prefer, a subject you almost certainly already have an opinion about. Whether you believe in them or not, you can't deny the sheer persistence of UFO stories, which first appeared on the national radar 50 years ago. Over the years, hundreds of people from all walks of life have claimed to have seen UFOs. Some even describe close encounters with alien beings. Here's a sampling. We've seen them. <laughs> You've seen them? Yeah. Round here? Seen from three to seven in the sky at night. A smaller object, almost identical in size, came up from behind it, attached itself to the bottom of it. It wasn't a helicopter because when it did take off or fly away, it flew at a rapid rate of speed. I told the Major that uh, that tower beacon is paralleling us, or coming with us. It was just getting larger and larger. It looked like a uh, landing light on the uh, commercial aircraft. We just kept looking and I couldn't figure out Tom why. And uh, she was looking over there too. She said, well, it's one of those UFOs. I said, what you're talking about? About the time that I've seen it, 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 it seemed to just start this way up. And all of a sudden, it, uh, one end of it just opened up. It scared me because didn't know what it was. I knew it was an airplane and nothing like that because it sat down too low. It came too low towards the house. At one point, it was right over our car for us, right up the road here until we made the turn. And it made the turn and, and crossed right over in front of us. And, and they had arms and they didn't have hands as we have. They, they had more or less like pictures or claws or something like that. This object was there. There isn't any question in my mind about it. The mid-1970s was a particularly active time for UFO sightings. On December 15, 1974, NBC News responded to the phenomenon with a special report called UFOs, Do You Believe? Anchored by Jim Hartz. Here's how that program began. Some say they are space beings from another world. They had arms, something like humans, human arms, human beings' arms, but their, their hands were well, like this. Some say they are a mass psychological delusion of the 20th century. I saw a flying object that was not manufactured, in my opinion, on this earth. That was metallic, and it was an aircraft. Some say they're advanced space vehicles being built by the Americans or the Russians or somebody here on Earth. It was definitely a flying craft. And I say maybe they are the angels of God. Right about this position here in the plexiglass, I observed the UFO. But then when we saw this red dome on top, we knew, you know, and no sound at all from it. We knew that it had to be, you know, a UFO. In front of this tree, you're not... Well, it came tree. over, and then came down a little bit lower than that. Mm -hmm. And then went back up, and it, mm -hmm. it right in a perfect V shape. What we do know from refining this data is that something is being seen in our atmosphere, that this something is craft-like in nature. Uh, it's solid. Here's something going on in the sky. People report it constantly, over and over and over again for 30 years. It's part of our environment. Why isn't it something that's that's known? The airplane got quiet before the incident that was taking place. There was no sound involved. There was no worry. You can hear a pin drop. It definitely was late. The evidence is overwhelming that planet Earth is being visited by intelligently controlled vehicles from off the Earth. In other words, some UFOs are somebody else's spacecraft. We've had, in this country alone, several tens of thousands of UFO reports, yet there has not been a single crashed extraterrestrial spaceship. There hasn't been a single piece fall off of one. You see, the idea of us being visited should be the hypothesis of last resort. Only when every other possibility is eliminated do we uh, go to such exotic possibilities. It was in the late 1940s when people first began reporting unidentified flying objects, or flying saucers as they were then called. For a while it was a sensation, and enough attention was centered on the subject to cause the United States Air Force to begin a study of the phenomenon. For several years that quieted the public clamor, and then five years ago the Air Force closed its investigation with the conclusion that even though a small percentage of the sightings could not be explained, Earth was not being visited from outer space. 
That, however, did not put an end to the UFO sightings. In fact, during the last two years, they've been increasing in number. Tonight, we will hear from people who claim to have seen unidentified flying objects. We will also hear from people who believe that some UFOs are spaceships from somewhere else and from other people who do not believe that at all. We're going to report how that question stands at the moment and let you decide. Do you believe? Our sun is one of billions of stars in the galaxy. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is one of billions in the known universe. The odds are good that somewhere beyond Earth, life has evolved, even intelligent life. Does that mean that extraterrestrials have summoned the will and the ability to cross light years of space just to visit us? That question lies at the heart of the UFO debate. Here again, the 1974 NBC News special, UFOs, Do You Believe? These people are tracking flares for practice. So if they ever see a UFO, they will be able to report accurately its speed and direction. It's an exercise held every summer in Southern Illinois by the Mutual UFO Network. Still 280 degrees. We attack this entirely from a scientific viewpoint because the people in the Mutual UFO Network are very serious. I mean, they're from all walks of life, from all occupations, all ages, but they have one common interest, and that is resolving the UFO phenomenon. Do UFOs exist? How are they powered? What's their system of propulsion? Where do they originate? Where are they from? And what can we learn from these little fellows that drive them? On the outskirts of Tucson, Arizona, is the headquarters of the oldest of the UFO study groups, the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization. It was founded in 1952 by Jim and Carl Lorenzen. We always expected, I think, in the early days that the mystery would be solved in the next day. But after a few years went by, we began to change our attitude. So we began to work for the goal of collecting data that can be used as a base for scientific study. Here we have objects which are obviously beyond our um, technology flying around the skies, occasionally landing, things or entities getting out of them, taking soil samples and vegetable samples, sometimes rabbits or something, whatever they get their hands on. We ought to know who they are, where they're from, and why they're here. This uh, UFO that you observed, what time did you see it and on what day? John Acuff is president of the largest of the UFO organizations, the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, which has its headquarters in a Maryland suburb of Washington. We know something's up there. The evidence is just overwhelming that something is being seen and we cannot identify it. However, what that something is, is still in doubt, and that's what the research effort is all about at this point in time. Much of what we hear about unidentified flying objects comes through the three major UFO study groups. ICAP in Maryland, APRO in Arizona, and MUFON in Quincy, Illinois. All three of the UFO groups are chartered as non-profit educational organizations. Among them, the three groups have about 8,000 dues-paying members scattered around the 50 states and in about 30 foreign countries. The dues pay the cost of running an office and publishing a monthly newsletter. Each group's newsletter is filled mostly with reports of recent sightings. And these reports are one of the keys to understanding the UFO phenomenon. The UFO organizations exist because the sightings exist. And just as we started down the woods when it went up through the tree, it looked like a big cigar shape. No one knows how many sightings there are. No one knows even how many are reported. Each UFO organization says they receive one or two a day, either directly or after the sightings have been reported to police departments, newspapers, or radio and television stations. Although we don't know how many sightings there are each day, we do know there is a steady stream of reports of strange things seen in the sky. What the government knows about those strange things in the sky when time and again continues. 
not easy for the U.S. government to keep a secret, much less sustain a massive half-century-long cover-up of what it is alleged to know about UFOs. Nevertheless, conspiracy theories abound, often combining mistrust of government, ignorance of facts, and a lot of wishful thinking about visitors from outer space. When UFOs began making headlines in the late 40s, the Air Force began an investigation that continued for 22 years. During most of that time, the Air Force's chief civilian consultant on UFOs was Dr. J. Allen Hynek, who was then an astronomer at Ohio State University. Doctor, out of all the 10,000 odd sightings that uh, the Air Force has investigated, have you any evidence for uh, extraterrestrial spaceships or what have you? None of the evidence that I've examined would indicate any proof at all that we are being visited by extraterrestrials. Dr. Hynek called himself a skeptic during those years. Now, he believes UFOs should have had a higher priority. Had the Air Force really thought the subject was serious, then it would have been certainly under the head of at least a colonel and probably a general. But for years, it was under the head of a captain, and sometimes even just a lieutenant to begin with. Various Air Force bases had some local officer who was to investigate things, and that, that was not the most highly prized assignment uh, on the Air Force Base, to be the, the local UFO officer. Well, they never actually denied the existence of UFOs, never once, of the, of the phenomenon of UFOs. But they said, in effect, whatever it was, it was did not endanger the national security of the United States. And that is their primary responsibility. The government's UFO files are stored here at Maxwell Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama. In five and a half filing cabinets are notes, documents, and interviews on 12,618 UFO cases. 701 of them are still marked unknown. Since 1969, the investigation has been officially closed. Today, the investigation of UFO sightings is in the hands of the private UFO organizations. These people are members of the Mutual UFO Network, and they are all part-time volunteer investigators. Anybody who recognizes a UFO right off the bat, you should be suspicious. Why was this person ready to see a UFO? One of the investigators at this meeting is Ted Phillips, a highway inspector from Sedalia, Missouri, who pursues UFO cases in his spare time. Mr. Phillips, like almost everyone else here, has never seen a UFO himself. His interest comes through the reports of what others have seen. I found an imprint here, like with a tripod. It sat down here, and whatever it was, a creature, or object, or however, it got out and went this way. With the grass, it was as tall now, as you can see, but it was brushed aside. And I guess the footprints were about five feet apart, I guess, as described, was a little real large. And it made a circular motion. Right in this, right this vicinity here where this tree limb hit jerked and jerked to snap completely. It made a thrashing sound. This was shook my daughters, because uh, with the other activities going on, the light shining and the movement, movement and the thrashing sound, well, she got somewhat hysterical almost, and I was trying to hold my cool, not to come on and come and do myself and uh, crap. The Richards case, the Columbia, Missouri case, is a very good one. Shortly afterwards. <laughs> I have no idea what he saw, other than to say that he saw a UFO, because we can't identify it. There's no rational explanation for it. And a second or two, <laughs> here he comes right back again, as if it forgot something, you know. Uh, and land at the same identical spot up there. And you mentioned loading your gun. Yes, and something at this time told me not to shoot, or even not to go outside. Just to stay still, lock your doors, and, and just wait it out. That's what I did. Well, having your dogs exhibit that kind of fear, too, yeah, that was another good indication. Yeah, that's right. They disappeared, they quit barking, and uh, what you might say, we were trapped. <laughs> so we couldn't do anything. The Richards case is, is a very, very interesting case. 
and it has to rank quite high. Like other UFO investigators, Mr. Phillips has two problems. First, he must pursue UFO cases on his own time and at his own expense. Second, the physical evidence is never conclusive. What could be proof of a UFO landing could also be explained in other ways. In the end, Mr. Phillips must judge the UFO sighting by what the witness tells him about it. You must take... Another part-time UFO investigator is Dr. Alan Hynek, chairman of the astronomy department at Northwestern University. Right over right here is where I took the shot. All right, now then, show me exactly where it is. Last summer, Dr. Hynek investigated a UFO sighting in Lincolnshire, Illinois. The witness was David Dorn, age 11. The first photograph was taken, as I recall, above those treetops, just coming down like a bubble. The second photograph was coming down at a very steep angle, coming down right past that treetop. I think it's just a little bit lower than those trees over there. All right, and then what? And then it came up just like a V. And I got another shot of it coming up. And then it started coming down a little faster than before, which I took another picture. So you came down a second time? Yes. And hovered, which I took another picture. And then up through the clouds. So just about 60 seconds, just about. Right. I took a picture of it going up. That was my last shot. If you were going to deliver any fake photographs like this, let me ask you, how would you go about it? Hmm. Well, the first thing that comes to the mind is that I could probably take a garbage can lid and maybe rig it up in a wire from a treetop to another treetop and photograph it at different angles. I see. And do uh, you think that would be a likely thing to do? No, but that's really about all I can think. Let me ask, did you do that? No. All right. Well, I had to get there. And now, tell me, where are the negatives? Well, those were accidentally lost by uh, my fault. I uh, was so excited about the results of the pictures. They turned out so good that I just threw everything away, and they went out with the trash the other night. You're just so interested in watching the pictures, seeing the yeah, pictures, brother. Yeah, I got so excited about them, yes. <laughs> I'll bet you that's bothered you since. Yes, it has. You've been kidding about that quite a bit? Quite a bit. <laughs> You are time and again as we look at the UFO phenomenon, 50 years old and still going strong. There's a lively market for UFO information. Hundreds of books have been written on the subject, clubs have been formed, conventions held, souvenirs sold. UFO might just as well stand for unprecedented financial opportunity. Despite all the hucksterism and hype, the question remains, what about the UFO sightings that cannot be easily explained? Let's return to the 1974 NBC News special, UFOs, Do You Believe?, beginning with a clip from talk show host Mike Douglas. According to a recent Gallup poll survey, 51% of, of the people interviewed believe that unidentified flying objects are real and not just figments of the imagination. And my next guests are a little more than just believers because they actually came in contact with a UFO. Please welcome Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker. These two men are probably the best known UFO witnesses in history. Theirs was not an ordinary UFO sighting. Many people wanted to hear about it. The people themselves don't want to, they, they just are not seeking publicity, just want to relay their story to proper government authority. Sheriff's deputies went to the scene. There's no way of us determining whether anything landed here. What happens now? We're fixing to take them to Keysler Air Force Base right now. We're checking them for radiation, and they're going to check them over there. UFO investigators interviewed the men. Both of the men were able to be hypnotized. The experience, however, has been so traumatic that I thought it best that we go slow with this investigation. There's simply no question in my mind but that these men have had a very trying experience. They came out to a point. At first, the men refused to talk to reporters. They, when, then, they agreed to talk if they were not seen. 
Soon, they were facing the cameras and talking to anyone who would listen. But when two men come in and say they have been picked up by a spacecraft and examined, how do you go about investigating that? Well, all we could do was go to the scene and interview these men and, and really stay with these men and uh, observe them and question them. I mean, to the fullest extent. And at no time could we, their stories were the same. We interviewed them separately and before, and then we put them together. And we, we monitored their conversation. I believe the men saw something that scared them. Now, like I said already, I don't know what. A few days after the UFO incident, Charlie Hickson went back to his job as a foreman at Walker and Sons Shipyard in Pascagoula. Calvin Parker also worked at the shipyard, but after the incident, he quit his job and moved back to his hometown, Laurel, Mississippi. Just to start with, I thought I was, you know, I was just down as far as mentally. So I got out and got married, got a job on his chicken farm. While I was working in the oil field, they wouldn't let me work out there and even pay so, because you know how much a man is, they'll harass you and all. So I quit, went to work on his chicken farm, just me and my wife, and I mean, I really enjoyed it down there now. I've got myself back together in the past few months. And I'm feeling a lot better now. I'm doing real good now. Do you have any notion why you were picked? Uh, no. No, not really. I guess I've asked myself that question a hundred times. Why me? It is, in my mind, a hoax a hoax that's been perpetrated on the American public. Um, the story is so fantastic, it almost challenges the uh, one's uh, credulity. Well, the only honest thing I can say is to, that they both had one hell of a frightening experience. But whether it was a real nuts and bolts hardware, something absolutely tangible, uh, I can't say, because when I was there, I looked around to see if there are any physical effects, as we have had in other cases, where the ground has been disturbed or tree branches broken. I could find no evidence, no physical evidence in this particular case. And yet, uh, to them, I feel quite sure they weren't hoaxing or weren't lying. Things have been written, and many different stories have been told about what happened October 11, 1973, on the banks of the Pascoe River here in Pascoe, Mississippi. We had encountered something that had to be from another wall. Our government said... Mr. Hickson's record is a straightforward account of the story he has told so often during the last year. Get more involved with it. They should we need to get to care what we're so feeling. Mr. Hickson is also writing a book and has taken a leave of absence from his job to work on it. You know, something will happen to all of us some of these days, and if something did happen to me, then uh, there will be a record of what did happen to Calvin and me. I will announce Rennie Bradner, TV reporter on the scene, reports on UFOs. Okay, Rennie, and then you'll, 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 like I said, we want the record sold, and then you'll introduce Mr. Hicks. And then after that, I'm going to take this young lady here, I'm going to hypnotize her, she's going to go back to her mommy's tummy, and we're going to go into her super consciousness, which is back into the probably another world or somewhere. And then we're going to ask her questions about all about UFOs. Charlie, I want you to sit next to her because you're going to feel some of your vibrations. Sunday, uh, I'm going to sit down with him, and I'm going to get just as close as I can of what the crap looks like. <laughs> hey, Charlie. I probably look worse than that. <laughs> Did you see the thing take off and go away and disappear? Um, I saw it leave. I can't say that uh, how far out I've seen it, but it, 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 it seemed to just almost instantly it was gone. Yeah, and this is uh, the examining yes. thing that yes. it floated in front of you. Right. How, how do you feel about all this by now? Do you feel, why do you think you were singled out? Well, I don't know. I, I, can't, um, I can't figure that out. I, I have no idea. I keep saying, why me, you know? What, what does it mean? Uh, dear Mr. Hickson, 
We saw you on the Dick Cavett show, and we were fascinated by your experience. We believe in the things you have been said, and do not think you are involved in a hoax of any kind. We do believe that we are not the only beings in the universe, and that people should be aware of that fact. And it's uh, signed sincerely, Sarah Roberts and Jim Nelson. I didn't believe him at first, just like all other people. I really didn't believe it. But now, I definitely believe every word he has spoken because I have been through with what he has gone through with, you know, living with him. It's cost me a lot of time. It's actually cost me money. But uh, I don't know. I just feel obligated now to to uh, to let the, the entire world, if necessary, know that these things did happen to us, that it, that it is true. He's a truthful man. I voted for number one. He looks like the kind of a gentleman that this uh, conceivably did happen to. Like somebody said, he looks very sobered by the experience. We have two votes for number somewhere. one. And we have one vote for number two and one vote for number three. So will the real Charles Hickson please stand up? Ah. The McLaughlin Group. Saturdays at opening is to country music, a tried and true topic with a built-in national audience. But it's long been true that flying saucers aren't just for tabloids anymore. Here's NBC's Tom Brokaw on the subject in 1979. This is an unidentified flying object, a UFO photographed by an Australian television film crew shot of an airplane window as they flew over New Zealand earlier this week. The pilot of the plane said he spotted it at about 20 miles, and then it began to turn with him as he changed course at 10 miles, and then it circled above and below the plane, making definite movements until it disappeared. Well, closer home, reports of UFO sightings have been sweeping Italy since shortly before Christmas. From Sicily in the south to Milan in the north, photographers have been snapping away at the skies to come up with pictures like these, objects that seem at least to defy normal explanation. Well, it's raised a lot more speculation about just what is going on out there. And among others who have been following this very carefully this morning is a man who has his home in Evanston, <laughs> Illinois. He is Dr. J. Allen Hynek, Professor Emeritus of Astronomy at Northwestern University. He has been talking with UFO researchers around the world because that's part of his job. He's the director of the UFO Center uh, in uh, Evanston, Illinois. Can you tell us what they're saying, the experts in New Zealand, first of all, about what was spotted down there? Well, we need much more data on that. It's a grand mix-up at the moment. Uh, we don't know, actually don't know at the moment, whether some of the shots were of Venus or whether they are uh, something real. And if we are to believe what the reports are, the preliminary reports, then it is not Venus. It's uh, because they say the thing went under the plane and around the plane and so forth. But this all calls for some very real research, and no, no real research has been done. And by, by that I mean funded research, because here we have a subject that has been uh, capturing the interest of millions of people, and yet nothing really is being done about it. Uh, let, before we get to the research angle, what about the situation in Italy? Oh, that is really wild. I was talking to Florence just yesterday, and uh, last Saturday in Pizarro, uh, a huge object was reported to have landed right smack in the middle of an army barracks and it hovered about two meters above the ground, and they tell me it cooked the ground underneath it now. And then uh, the, the, um, it has been brought up at the, uh, in the uh, Italian Congress. Yeah. They're calling for an investigation. The uh, Ministry of Defense is puzzled. They're embarrassed, as a matter of fact, as to what this is all about. Isn't it possible that these are just gaseous formations, which has been one of the explanations often uh, offered for <laughs> UFOs? Yeah, I'm afraid it goes back to the day when I called the Michigan thing swamp gas way back then. Right. But uh, that is uh, pretty much out. What about these people who say that they've been abducted by a little green man or held hostage for a time, have a close encounter of whatever kind? That's exactly what they say. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I worked with them uh, quite a bit. They are not lying. They believe it has happened. And uh, as one of the founders of modern sociology said, if, what, uh, if people believe something is real, then the effects are real. Well, what do we do about these most recent sightings and all the sightings? We have an international body formed with cooperation in the parts of lots of governments funding a research uh, program of some kind. That's what should be done. The, the subject came up in the United Nations recently. Mm -hmm. We have reports from 133 different countries, and the same pattern exists around the world. It's not just localized in one particular country, you see.
The rise in interest in UFOs over the past half century has coincided with an increase in general mistrust of the government. And whatever the government says about UFOs, it only seems to make things worse. UFOs again, flying objects, reported spasmodically for many years now, and most people have remained skeptical. Now, the federal government says there have been more reports of sightings in recent years and some around military bases, they say, and some witnesses reported the UFO UFOs were shaped like hamburgers, even Big Macs. Here's Ford Rowland at the Pentagon. The Air Force has insisted since 1969 that sightings of unidentified flying objects are explainable. That what looks like a flying saucer is really a weather balloon or a meteorite, like this one appears to be in this old film. But some of the sightings have never been explained. Newly released government documents show that there was a sudden string of sightings of UFOs in late 1975. The objects were seen around nuclear storage facilities, missile silos, and three Air Force bases in this country. Guards reported seeing strange lights in the sky. The objects were tracked on military radar screens. Some were thought to be helicopters because they hovered right over missile silos, and when chased by military planes, the objects sped away at very high speeds, too fast to be helicopters. In 1976, a glowing object in Iran eluded an F-4 Phantom jet after the jet's electronic weapons suddenly became inoperative. The Central Intelligence Agency collected reports of sightings for years from all over the world. The CIA concluded that many were phony, most were explainable, and there was no threat to national security. Neither the Air Force nor the CIA is investigating UFOs now, and officials do not like to talk about the subject. Questioned about the 1975 sightings, a Pentagon press officer said that if a base commander wants an investigation, he should phone his local sheriff. The Air Force recently issued what it called the last word on the Roswell incident involving the alleged crash of a UFO in 1947. Officials acknowledge that they do not expect the report will end all speculation any more than they did the last time they issued a report on Roswell in 1994. And in the skies over the West Coast this morning, an unidentified speeding light and apparently a sonic boom. Many saw it, but there's been no official explanation. Now, maybe they should ask the Pentagon in, oh, about 47 years. NBC's Jim Kloshevsky tonight on the Air Force fessing up almost a half century after another UFO. Stories about UFOs and aliens swooping down from outer space have long captured our imagination, especially the Roswell incident. 47 years ago, something crashed into the desert outside Roswell, New Mexico, and for 47 years, the Pentagon lied about it. Eyewitnesses had reported debris from a flying disc scattered over two-thirds of a mile. Some stories included the bodies of four-foot-tall aliens, crew members killed in the extraterrestrial crash. The Pentagon denied it was a UFO and claimed the debris came from a military weather balloon. But the Air Force now says it wasn't a weather balloon after all, but a top-secret balloon to spy on the Soviets. That would appear to explain all the Pentagon's secrecy, right? Wrong. Oh, my God. This thing was big. As depicted in a recent movie, several witnesses claim the military forced them to change their stories and hide the evidence. Walter Hott was an airman in Roswell at the time, and now runs a UFO museum. I think that their comments are simply another cover-up. Some UFO buffs believe the military covered it up to protect against public panic because they couldn't explain it. Perhaps alien and non-human, uh, something not made by any power on this earth. The government contends most UFO sightings can be explained. But out of the thousands reported over the years, one out of ten remains a mystery. As for Roswell, the case is not closed. The General Accounting Office will release its own report soon. The decision rests with you. Jimmy Kliszewski, NBC News, Washington. The alien of the 1950s movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still, was a handsome humanoid who ordered Earthlings to behave or else. These days, aliens are portrayed as goofy incompetence on TV sitcoms or hostile, repulsive creatures bent on destruction in movies such as Independence Day. Is this progress? The decision rests with you. That's time and again for now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jane Pauley, and we're history.